Let's call to order the regular business meeting for the Board of Education for Monday, May 21st. Um, if I could ask everyone to please stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. comment here in the beginning anybody who would like to address the board is welcome to do so uh, I'd ask you to limit your comments to three minutes or less um, we will have um, substantial student recognition um, tis the season uh, we will honor our outgoing school board representatives and welcome in our new school board representatives student school board representatives and uh, then get the student school board reps we've got an extensive superintendent's report covering a number of important items we will approve the consent vote agenda, which we reviewed a week ago. Um, we've got brief updates, actually not so brief updates, from program personnel and facilities and finance. Uh, no property, seat all, <coughs> little seat all update, ISB, Jim, nothing, okay. And then we will convene an executive um, session this evening to review collective negotiating matters. Um, that's 5 ILCS 120 slash 2C2. Um, we will not be taking any action following that executive session. All right. Any questions before we start? All right. So we will move on to um, public comment. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak? You're all so quiet. Okay. Um, seeing none, we'll move on to our student recognition for the night. Who's first? Huh. All right. Dr. Tom Coolantes, LHS Principal, steps to the podium. All right, well, good evening. I am Tom Coolantes, Principal of Libertyville High School, and uh, very proud to um, recognize two separate groups of students today. And um, what's really cool about Libertyville High School is that um, we not only celebrate um, teams that are athletic teams when they accomplish great things, but we um, celebrate our fine arts teams and our um, co-curricular, extracurricular, co our extracurricular teams, co-curricular, extracurricular. That's that's a mouthful. But our uh, we had a big parade last week with our uh, marching band taking both of these groups of students through the school to celebrate some extraordinary accomplishments. So we're going to start with our math team, who took second place in the state of Illinois at the big competition. And here tonight to represent them is their coach, Rick Brenner. Rick, come on over. And... Math team coach Rick Brenner walks up to the podium. Coach, coach Lisa Davis is here, and Coach Tammy Rendy is here. Coach Davis and Randy join Coach Brenner at the podium. Well, I'm going to let them tell you a little bit about the competition, and then you'll call your students up, and we'll present them their um, their certificates. Math team coach Rick Brenner. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the board for recognize, recognizing us tonight. Uh, we had a really good run for uh, state at regionals. We were, I think, fourth. Does that sound right? Uh, and the kids practiced really hard and put in extra time, and then we came home second. We were really pleased with that this year. Uh, a really good group of kids, and we will announce them. I believe Dr. K is going to hand them a certificate. Mm -hmm. You can come forward. Um, I don't know who's here and who's not here, so I'll just read all of the names. Some of them will be in absentia. Is that OK? That's good. <laughs> They're studying for finals, probably. Yes, <laughs> could be. <laughs> All right, here we go. Daniel Shamoan, Aaron Chen, Allison Chu, Tara D'Souza, Jake Duffy, Lily Irvine, 
Samantha Fan, Mitch Gifford, Albert Guan, John He, Brian Hong, Matthew Wong, Sam Herr, Sebastian Ingino, Alex G, Ben John, Nathan John, Noah Kublanc, Katie Lund, Luke Markison, Desi Nainer, Matthew Newberg, <coughs> Siraj Rajendran, Savika Sembian, Matt Shinnick, Maggie Schutz, Ian Smith, Charles Stankey, Liam Tucker, Lawrence Wang, Louis Wang, Richard Shaw. Dr. Coolant has hand certificates to the members of the math team. The members of the math team in attendance and the coaches shake hands with board president Grudy and superintendent Lee. The members of the math team in attendance and the coaches pose for pictures with board president Grudy and superintendent Lee. So if you guys hold on for, uh, you can come back here to the audience, and we're going to bring up now our Super State um, Honor Band Selectee, our Wind Ensemble, and uh, their um, director, their coach, their conductor, their spiritual advisor, Mr. Adam Gore. I think you are here. I'm going to let Adam explain to you um, the, the Wind Ensemble's accomplishments, but I would just say this. If music was a contact sport, we would be state champions. So, Adam Gore and Dustin Harvey joined Dr. Cooling Tusk at the podium. Thankfully it's not, but I, I do have to undergo concussion protocol training yes. at the start of the year for marching band. So, um, uh, so Super State is a festival hosted annually by the University of Illinois for about 45 years now. Uh, about 150 bands audition in different classes, and they accept six down there, and then a panel of collegiate judges selects an honor band. Um, this is the 10th time that LHS has been selected. Uh, my predecessor did a fabulous job of, of representing down there as well. Um, and before we call the names, a special shout out to my math team colleagues, particularly Lisa and Tammy, because a uh, half dozen of these kids have the same, you'll, you'll notice a half dozen of the same faces come up here and they actually ran the kids from our performance over to the math team, uh, which happened to thankfully both be in Champaign at the time, which was great. Uh, but they were really, really great working with us so these kids could have both experiences and as it turns out, successfully for both, which was phenomenal. So, thank you. And uh, here we go. There's, there's a few names, there's like 50 of us. <laughs> All right, uh, Elias Anderson, uh, Nick Berklin, Julian Bach, Audrey Chung, Tate Constable, Alex Dikelski, Jacob Dikelski, Lauren Gaedek, Beck Gantus, Meredith Golden, Jackson Govern, Eloise Hines, Sebastian and Gino, Melissa G, Ben Johnson, Henry Coulterman, Noah Kublank, Alyssa Leroy, David Lee, Aaron Lease, 
George Legan, Ainsley Lounsbury, Maddie Main, Melissa Manich, Chris Martin, Julia McGormley, John McGuan, Julia Mollenhauer, Victoria Moy, Amanda Murbach, Ian Nagel, Claire Newberger, Matthew Newberger, Catherine Olson, Matthew Olson, Eileen Rice, Kess Rogers, Kate Rolek, Emily Roller, Richie Rush, Matt Sleep, Carter Smith, Ian Smith, CeCe Snyder, Ava Zetner, Kirsten Townander, Nora Tucker, Spencer Bang, and Annalisa Waddick. Members of the Wind Ensemble receive their certificates and gather near the podium. Rick Brenner returns to the microphone. Sorry, one more comment. Uh, we do share a lot of kids, and our competition begins downstate at 9 a.m. So what time did the band have to leave to get there for our competition at 9 a.m.? So I want to say thank you to them for doing that for us. The members of the Wind Ensemble pose for pictures with Board President Gruden, Superintendent Lee, Principal Kulente's Director Adam Gould, and Fine Arts Supervisor Halvey. multi-dimensional these students are. Um, we also have Melissa Manich is here and she's back from taking fifth in the state of Illinois Woo! girls track meet. Oh, wow. Not only did she take fifth, which earns her all state, she set the school record in her event, which uh, the 3200? Mm -hmm. 3200, she ran it in two minutes and 22 seconds, correct? No. <laughs> <laughs> How long was your time? 39, 10 minutes and 39. 10 minutes and 39 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, <laughs> Melissa. Melissa shakes hands with Dr. Coolantess, then returns to her seat. Okay, I think that's it for the LHS awards. I don't know, uh, John, do you have any today for Vernon Hills? It's a great day to be a Wildcat. <laughs> Superintendent Dr. Prentice Lee addresses the audience. All right, before you all leave, okay, uh, a couple of things, because you thought you were going to be able to leave now. Huh? Okay, so now we go to the second. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Here's what I want to tell you. My name is Prentice Lee, and I'm the superintendent. If we have not had the opportunity to meet uh, before, but this is our favorite thing to do, is celebrate our students being successful at whatever they do and wherever they do it. And um, students, phenomenal, uh, it's impressive, incredibly blessed to have you here as students at uh, both of our high schools. But um, we also want to acknowledge tonight that you've had a lot of support along the way and a lot of uh, good teaching at home. Uh, and a lot of parents who have made a lot of sacrifices for you to be where you're at tonight. So here's what we'd like to do. We'd like to have all the parents and any family and friends that are here of these outstanding young people, we'd like you to stand up and let us give you a round of applause, okay? <laughs> Okay, we're gonna ask one other thing before we let you, of course you can stay for the rest of the meeting if you want, okay? Before we let uh, you exit, um, 
We are, uh, we have seated a new board member uh, in the last few weeks and uh, Dr. Grudy just wants to take a minute to introduce her to you and a little bit about her and then we'd like to give her a big 128 welcome to the school board, okay? So Pat. Okay, so at a special meeting that was held on April 30th, um, the Community High School District 128 Board of Education voted unanimously to appoint Lisa Hessel to the Board of Education. Lisa will fill the position vacated following the recent resignation of Ellen Maurer, and her position will last approximately 11 months until the next election. She was selected from an outstanding field of 15 applicants um, and multiple interviews. Uh, we narrowed that list down to five, uh, and then um, after uh, uh, a very thorough process, actually, we were really thrilled to welcome Lisa uh, onto the team here. Lisa's a Vernon Hills resident, a parent of a Vernon Hills sophomore. Uh, she's an active volunteer both at the high school as well as at District, one, one, uh, District 73. She is an avid reader and enjoys traveling with her husband. Um, she's got an extensive background in human resources, uh, most recently as Director of Talent Management at GCG Financial. She's currently a student, correct? Uh, no? I, I, okay. I'm, I'm, uh, on high. Hiatus. See, it's a busy job. Um, she's, but anyway, she has worked towards her MBA from DePaul, um, and she also holds a bachelor's in broadcast journalism from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. So Lisa, we're thrilled to have you join the team. Um, we look forward to working with you um, and putting a lot of those um, very useful skills to work for us. So thank you very much for coming. Dr. Lee retakes his seat at the board table as a bulk of the audience leaves. The meeting continues with board president Grudy. Alright, so uh, at this point we would like to uh, have the opportunity to thank our outgoing um, student school board representatives. This past year we've had six students, three from each high school. Um, do an absolutely outstanding job of representing the students and making sure that we as board members um, get a uh, first-hand perspective um, directly from the students. And it's been a busy year, uh, and actually this group of six people is an extremely busy group of people, um, not only working here on the school board, but I know a number of them are involved in an awful lot of additional extracurricular activities. So we certainly thank you for all of your hard work and commitment to the board. Um, we've been extremely interested in, in your perspectives and the things that you've shared with us. You've done a fantastic job. Um, every year I, I always think that was the best group yet, um, and you didn't disappoint. So um, great job, and we wish all of you, I know all of you have exciting things going on next year. We wish you the very, very best, and uh, certainly hope you uh, take a little bit of that Wildcat and Cougar spirit with you wherever you go. So we do have a small plaque that we would like to share with each of you. Um, I can read it. Um, the Community High School District 128 Board of Education expends a special thank you to you um, for your service as the 2017-2018 LHS or VHHS student representative to the board. Your dedication on behalf of your fellow students has enhanced the communication and understanding of issues between the student and the board members. And again, we thank you for all of your input. So if I could ask Zachary Ford to come forward. Actually, from Libertyville, we have Zachary Ford. We have uh, Eleanor Daly and uh, Lola Ackerman. Madison Kerber. Madison Kerber. Madison Kerber. Okay. You're looking for your list. I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. So there's Zach. Okay, Zach. Congratulations. Come over and 
the picture up and then we'll take the name right now. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't have to cross it off. Right. I think I think I Zachary Ford, Lola McKinlade and Madison Kerber pose for a picture with their plaques. Principal Tom Kulintas, Board President Pat Grudy and Superintendent Brantis Lee. Hiba Ahmed, Kelsey Carido and Francis Ferolo pose for a picture with their plaques. Principal John Gilliam, Board President Pat Grudy and Superintendent Brantis Lee. Both sets of student board representatives pose for a picture with principals Kulintat and Gilliam along with board president Grudy and superintendent Lee. The 2018-2019 student school board representatives join Board President Grudy, Dr. Lee, Dr. Kulintas and Dr. Gilliam for a picture. Board President Pat Grudy. Student Representative Madison Kerber. All right, so on behalf of the three of us, we just want to start out saying that we'd like, we sincerely like to thank you for this amazing opportunity. Um, the opportunity to see how decisions are made regarding school decisions and education was extremely insightful, and we thank you for recognizing the importance of student voices in our community. Um, to start out with LHS News, we had We Day on April 25th. And some of the LHS students and staff participated on this day at Allstate Arena to celebrate the service they have done and giving back to the community. So students got to hear speeches and musicians and leaders of the community 
to focus on the importance of giving back and persevering through obstacles in order to help others. Um, German classes, I got to hear Iker Pak, a consulate from the Turkish Embassy in Chicago, and he spoke to German classes about his story as well as the history and current state of German-Turkish relation. And this was relevant because um, Turkey it has the largest immigrant population in Germany. They make up about 5%. So that was just a great opportunity for them to hear some real life situations. And then we had a, our annual art show on May 3rd and 4th. So LHS students got to showcase their art pieces that they have made throughout the year. And then on the evening of May 3rd, there was also a silent auction. Um, our math team, as noted previously, um, got second place in state on May 5th. Special note of Desi Nine and John He because they were the state champions in the two-person event, which was very exciting. Um, for We have a group called FCCLA, which is the Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America, and they had a major success at their state competition. Sam Otto earned a silver medal for his relish tray, and Eliza Davinsky earned a gold medal for her fashion apparel display, as well as most outstanding in her competition, meaning that she had one of the highest scores in the state, which is obviously very impressive. And then lastly for me is that our bash fishing team, composed of Joey Bissing and Jackson Patton, won the sectional tournament on Monday, May 7th, and they just competed at state this past weekend to end off their season. Student Representative Zachary Ford. All right, so Interact Club, as many of you know, works very hard throughout the school year um, on different community outreach, outreach programs um, and just giving back to the community in pretty magnificent ways. So at the end of the year here, they received a grant from Louisville Sunrise Rotary Club for future, future projects due to their service work within the community. As a graduating senior program sponsored by U.S. Figure Skating, LHS senior Sophia Pearson earned a gold level distinction for accomplishments in figure skating over the year, um, including her participation in three sectional competitions and two national competitions. LHS Wind Ensemble likely recognized um, the highest level band at LHS won Super State on May 5th at U of I. Um, today at LHS, um, LHS had food trucks outside the school by the band doors. Um, and all proceeds from these food trucks went to the Why Not Project, um, honoring Tony Borsha, who passed away um, in 2017. And the Why Not Project raises funds and awareness for voting under the influence. Um, I was out at the food trucks today, and in spite of the rain, all the students had um, such a great time. I personally uh, enjoyed the um, grilled cheese with mac and cheese inside of it. It was quite a treat. Um, so it was just a great way to kind of wrap up the final day here before um, heading into week of finals. LHS students Olivia Cherry, Ian Cox, uh, Reese Danifel, and Anna Legutke uh, received honors for their writing from the National Council of Teachers of English. Cherry and Legutke received certificates of superior writing, and Danifel received their certificate of nomination. Furthermore, Legutke was admitted to the High School Arts Week at uh, Ragdale, which is a nonprofit artist community. The King and I, which LHS Theater Department produced as their fall musical, uh, was nominated for Best Production by Illinois High School Musical Theater Awards. In addition to Best Production, the show also received nominations for Best Director by Christopher Thomas and Best Actress for Alex Hibbert Brown. Um, the whole cast will be celebrated at the ceremony on June 4th at the Broadway Playhouse in Chicago. LHS Student Representative Lilla Kidmore right, Day. So as previously noted, um, LHS had seven members head to state this past weekend. Um, specifically, Melissa Manage received fifth place as state in the second or the two mile with a record of 10:39. Um, in soccer, the girls' soccer team was regional state champions this past weekend. And then in volleyball, the team won the NSC conference title last week and are working towards state now. Um, the team will play their first regional match tomorrow in Rockford. And then cabaret, so May 2nd was Choir's Cabaret concert in the auditorium, so various students were able to showcase their talents at LHS, LHS's traditional show. And then May 10th was the orchestra show, in which various dancers were able to showcase their creative dance talents. And then May 15th was the Seniors Honors Night, and multiple LHS students were given awards as well as scholarships for their work over the past four years at LHS. 
Student Representative Francis Ferrolo. For Vernon Hills, today was our seniors' honor assembly, and seniors were recognized for all of their achievements. This was an oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. This was an all-school assembly, which is unique in the way that the school shows the rest of the student body the accomplishments of their seniors and not just the senior class, mm -hmm. and what they should strive to work for, whether they're freshman, junior, or sophomore. Mm -hmm. And then special recognition to Tatiana Glutsky and Alexia Viviana, who raised money for a meditation garden that was finished last week. So the courtyard addition includes a bench, wind chimes, a fountain, bird bath, and what is that? Trails? Abby Hines made it to stay in the 3A sectional track meet for pole vaulting. She competed at Eastern Illinois University this past weekend and she did a great job, was happy with her results. For boys track, Tyler Gonzalez is going to state in the 400. Patrick Sears also going to state for pole vault. The D128 Difference Maker Project Recognition Ceremony occurred last weekend, last week where 10 students' projects were honored for honoring multiple people in our com community who have made a lasting impact in the lives of others. We'd also like to take a moment to recognize the staff members who are retiring this year Thank you for all of your years of dedication to our school and district. That's Ms. Day, Ms. Ballinger, Ms. Smithheiser, Mr. Peterson, Ms. Kazel, Ms. Et and Ms. Etnar is not retired, but she's of the science department moving away with her family to Seattle. The Student Diversity Council did an interfaith panel in which community members from different religious backgrounds answered questions from students to look at the way that we are all different yet the same, and we did this event under our mission of VH Unite. Student Representative Hiba Ahmed. Congratulations to the following students who earned a perfect ACT score Rachel Chung, Alexa Pomerantz, Patrick Sear, Maximo Zhu, and Alex Zhang. Also, congratulations to Stephanie Freckles, Kevin, and Jen Phelan, and the cast and crew of Radium Girls. All their performances were excellent, with closing night nearing a sellout. One community member seeing a VHS performance for the first time described the show as nothing short of professional quality. The Orchestra's Company also uh, performed their amazing show called Empowered, and um, as always, the quality and coordination of this event was awe-inspiring. Members of VH Media received honors in the 25th Annual Midwest Media Educators Association Awards held April 27th at Nico Valley High School. The team received first place in the commercial category and second place in music. Mrs. Martin is the advisor to VH Media. The VHHS Interact Club was recently selected by the Chick-fil-A Foundation to receive a micro-grant of $250, and Interact used this grant money to aid with their impact project. Students made fleece, blank fleece blankets that will be donated to children and their families staying at the Ronald McDonald House. Several VHHS FCL FCCLA members earned honors for their outstanding performances at the state competition in Springfield on April 13th, and they were coached by Mrs. Schwartz and Mrs. Wade Scarber. VHHS Student School Board Representative Kelsey Carino. Okay, so we had our first ever CrossFit Open Challenge for Vernon Hills High School students, and this is um, a nationwide competition that a lot of students in our CrossFit classes participated in. And Philip Swanson finished 2,538th out of 3,101 in the male team division, and his best finish was 2016th on one of the workouts named 18.4. Emma McGreevy finished 1,879th out of 2,350th um, in the female teen division, and her best finish was 1,379th in the workout 18.3. Um, girls soccer recently won regionals against Antioch and plays in the sectional semifinal tomorrow against Wakanda, so best of luck to the soccer team, and Francis is the captain, so best of luck to her too. <laughs> um, Grace Lim, Pranav Goyal, and Maddie Fernandez did an outstanding job speaking at the Sugarman uh, World Languages Achievement Awards a couple of weeks ago, and we got to hear their perspectives on um, their journeys and experiences through language, which was really cool. Um, congratulations to junior Cecilia Gao, who was elected by her peers to serve as Lieutenant Governor of the Junior State of America Midwest region. And this is a huge accomplishment for CC because she'll help lead the nation's largest student-run organization um, that builds young leaders to be active citizens in our democracy. Congratulations to our 16 recipients of the You Make a Difference Award winners, Mary Childers, Karen Clark, Matt Clifford, Andy Compton, Karen Day, Shannon Etnier, Stephanie Freckles, Myra Hines, uh, Heather Larson, Deb Lehman, Sandy Martin, Liz Peterson, Fred Pricer, C 
Chris Rivas and Jane Wenzel. Um, and then Abby, Francis said earlier, is going to state. Um, congratulations to our math team who um, placed fifth at state, which was really awesome. And then congratulations to the students that made it to state for their work in the Chicago Metro History Fair. And then we also um, want to say congratulations to our new board reps, Caitlin, Brandon, and Taylor. And also we just want to thank the board for the opportunity that we had to serve. Uh, we learned a lot about speaking and gained a lot of confidence and leadership skills. And we also gained three new friends from across Milwaukee. So that was really cool. Um, so thank you. Great, great job. How about real quick, just go down the table and uh, share with us what your plans are next year. Yeah, so I am going to be studying international relations at Pepperdine University. Um, I'm double majoring in psychology and journalism and minoring in film at USC. Is there some attraction to the West Coast? Switching it up. I'm going to Hope College in Holland, Michigan, and I think about majoring in international business or psychology. I'm not sure. No. I'm studying operations and management in the business school at University of Wisconsin Madison. I'll be studying international relations at Stanford University. I'll be studying business at University of Illinois in Urbana. Okay, just great job, great job by all of you guys. It's a fantastic. <laughs> Board President Pat Grudy. All right, uh, superintendent's report. Dr. Well, and uh, Dr. Grudy, we might mention that we have the pleasure of eating lunch at Baker Square once a month. Uh, we being Dr. Grudy, myself, and uh, Dr. Gilliam, and Dr. Calentis, and our six student board reps. Um, and I think they like the pie there too, which is which is always good. But the conversation and catching up with them is invaluable for all of us. Um, you know, in addition to just being really cool to kind of hang out with them for, you know, for an hour and a half once a month, but having the opportunity to talk with them and really get a student perspective um, on things is really helpful. So we are certainly going to miss all of you and we welcome all of you uh, next year. We're looking forward to hanging out with you and hearing from you next year as well. Okay, so congratulations to all of you again. Okay, I know you'll find this hard to believe, but I have three pages of additional good news. So uh, it's that time of year, and this is always the fun stuff, so um, we'll kind of work our way through this. District 128 is pleased to announce that LHS and VHHS ranked 12th and 15th in the state of Illinois in the 2018 U.S. News and World Report Best High School Rankings released earlier this month. The rankings awarded the top 5,948 public high schools with gold, silver, and bronze medals indicating their level of college readiness. LHS received a gold medal award and VHHS received a silver medal. The LHS and VHHS national rankings were 447 and 640 respectively, placing them in the top 3% of all the nation's 25,813 high schools reviewed. Only 182 of Illinois' 617 high schools made the rankings. Um, so congratulations to everyone. Uh, May 17th, uh, thanks to the work of the LHS and VHHS Junior U.S. History students, D128 was, made, was able to celebrate the stories of those receiving honors in the second annual uh, D128 Difference Makers Program. Difference Maker Program began in 2016-17. Uh, D128 Social Studies teachers Amanda Carroll from VHHS and Sarah Greensway from LHS collaborated on the development of the project as a way to bring project-based learning uh, to their classrooms that would provide students with an opportunity to become local historians. Students researched, interviewed, and created a video about their subject, and the entries were judged by the participating U.S. history classes, with 10 being selected to receive this year's honors. Teachers with classes participating in this year's Difference Maker Project were Amanda Carroll, uh, and Paul Friedrich at VHHS, and Sarah Greenswag, Mike Mansell, and Christina Dwyer at, VA, at LHS. This year's recipients and their student researchers were uh, Ruthie Paul Cottle, um, Kayla Cottle from VHHS, Liz Howard and Taylor Heimer, LHS, Susan Daniel, Jake Olive, VHHS, Joseph DeCara and Marissa DeLeon, De, De uh, VHHS, 
Dave and Maddie McInerney, McInerney, Clarice Austin, and Jack Maricoca. Um, Kelly Cotter and Cassandra Papano and Julie Neri at VHHS. Alex and Karamar Brown, Joseph Reyes and Francis Gorman, VHHS. Nick Bilek, Sydney Donovan, LHS. Elizabeth Ray, Peyton Makowski, and Samantha Gifford, VHHS. Gilfan, VHHS. And Sue Chain Lehor, Sneka Akarati, and Mia Wilkowski, VHHS. Learn more about this year's Difference Makers on D128 social media in the coming weeks. At the American Association of Teachers of German Awards ceremony held April 29th at the College of DuPage, D128 German teacher Alex Kurth received the Klett Langen Smith uh, Award in recognition for outstanding accomplishments in the teaching of German. He received the award based on his students' outstanding performance in national competition. Uh, we already mentioned the LHS math team finished second in the state this year, and the VHHS math team finished fifth in the state competition held at the University of Illinois. So congratulations to VHHS as well. At the Area Spring Special Olympics Games held recently at Lake Zurich High School, District 128 athletes took to the track, hoping to win gold and qualify for the state summer games. When the dust settled, they had won 21 medals and three ribbons, and six athletes qualified for state. Mallory Marvin, Charlie Halperin, Vinnie Roberts, Joseph Mahler, Drew McCarthy, and Chris Morozin all qualified for the summer games. They will join Hope Michelotti, Anna Schuller, Chris DeRose, and Alexa Donato, who qualified for state in bocce ball earlier in the year. Tristan uh, Hildago, uh, who will be competing in gymnastics, and Shaw Karanen, who will be competing in swimming. swimming. Also in Special Olympics news, Anna Scholler and Alexa Donato were chosen to play on the Team USA Illinois soccer team that will be competing at the Soccer Cup, which is part of the 50th anniversary celebration in Chicago um, this July, and our Special Olympians continue to do an amazing job. And in fact, before the meeting tonight, a group of us were able to uh, be down at their year-end um, Special Olympics Awards down in the gymnastics gym here, and uh, really, really exciting uh, to be with the students and the coaches and their parents. So congratulations to all of them. Retired LH LHS Band Director Don Shute and retired VHHS Orchestra Director and Fine Arts Chair Frank Lestina received honorary doctorate degrees, honorary doctorate degrees from Vandercook College of Music at the school's graduation on May 11th. Three LHS students are in recognition from the National Council of Teachers of English for their exceptional writing. Juniors Olivia Cherry and Anna Lagarty uh, will receive certificates of superior writing and junior Reese Dannenfeld will receive a certificate of nomination. National judges evaluated each piece of writing for expression of ideas, language use, and unique perspective. In addition, junior Reese Dannenfeld and sophomore Ian Cox earned recognition from the Illinois Association of Teachers of English for their exceptional writing. And junior Anna Laguti uh, has been admitted to the High School Arts Week at Ragdale Nonprofit Artist Community for the second year in a row. Four District 128 students received honors at the May 6th award ceremony conducted by the Illinois Council for Exceptional Children, North Suburban Chapter 336, as part of the Exceptional Children's Week celebration. Those receiving honors were Anna Scholler, Best I Can Be Award, nominated by Susan Price, LHS Special Services Teacher. Alex Quinde, Yes I Can Award, nominated by Karen Martin, <coughs> VHHS slash CDAW, Project Search Teacher. Alexa Donato, Yes I Can Award, nominated by Susan Price, LHS Special Services Teacher. And Hans Keith, Yes I Can Award, nominated by Karen Martin, VHHS CDAW, Project Search Teacher. LHS Department Secretary Irene Constantinidis and D128 Director of Community Education and Grants Diane Phillips received awards of excellence at the Illinois Chapter of the National School Public Relations Association, INSPRA, Distinguished Service Awards Luncheon held May 11th in Bolingbrook. The awards program recognizes individuals and groups for their efforts to support public education throughout Illinois. 
Projects by 11 VHHS juniors qualified to advance to the Illinois State History Fair held May 3 in Springfield. VHHS students competed in the following areas. In exhibits, David Leshiner, Thomas Florian, Jackson uh, Kisnick, Victor Camacho. A research paper, Ben Goroshenko, and websites, uh, Madeline Woodrow, Rachel Chung, Alice Zhang, Alex uh, Pomerantz, Ria Sabramian, and Jawan Lee. Ben Goroshenko received two awards for his paper on the Lincoln-Douglas debates. He won awards from the Lincoln Foundation and the Lincoln Association, and each included a cash prize. Members of VH Media received honors in the 25th Annual Midwest Media Educators Association Awards held April 27th in Nequa Valley High School. The team received first place in the commercial category and second place in music. Sandy Martin is the advisor to VH Media. And LHS teachers Loretta O'Day and Kristen Tarrant traveled to Springfield with students for the FCC LA State Competition. Sam Otto competed in relish train and earned a silver medal. Eliza Dubinsky competed in fashion apparel display and earned a gold medal. Eliza also earned most outstanding in her competition, which means she had one of the highest scores in all of Illinois. And before we close good news tonight, I want to make a special comment of just the outstanding uh, senior recognition assemblies that we've had at both schools. At Libertyville, their tradition is to do it, uh, have their uh, program in the evening. Uh, very well attended a number of community supporters who contribute scholarships uh, to that program. The tradition at Vernon Hills is to have an all-school assembly during the day, which they did today. And uh, again, really marvelous uh, to see our uh, students recognize and, Thanks to John and his team and Tom and their teams for the, um, just the outstanding work um, that they do in preparing those programs uh, and making them happen because they are very special. To us. So thanks guys to you and your teams. Okay, uh, unless someone else has some good news that we missed. Any of you guys? Okay, anybody else? Okay, uh, that's probably enough for May right now, right? Uh, next on the superintendent's report tonight is uh, school start time. And uh, we just want to remind the community again, um, as we have been um, updating the community for a number of months here at the board meeting, and uh, also in EPAW prints, that um, a representative district stakeholder, team of teachers, administrators, staff, and students, and parents presented a thorough review of their work on potential start times for next year to the Board of Education earlier in the year. Based on that work, the gr group presented recommendations to the board and the administration. The district administration made a final recommendation for a later start time next year to the board, and the board endorsed that recommendation. As I have been noting at several recent board and board committee meetings um, and in EPAW prints, uh, important components regarding the recommended start time schedule are subject to and part of the overall collective bargaining process, which is currently ongoing. When agreement is reached with the teachers union on this contractual issue, it will become part of the larger final bargaining agreement. Um, the union continues to, uh, to participate in those discussions. So that's our update right now on school start time. Okay, next on the superintendent's uh, report is LHS pool project update. And uh, Dan, um, what wisdom did Mark pass on to you? The pool is still currently under construction. Uh, there's water in the pool. Uh, it goes swimming. Yeah, so they're they're work, they're still working on uh, the foundations and everything, and so looking to get uh, the steel ready up in the next couple months here. So, um, so at, at this point, we're still uh, on budget, and on schedule for spring of next year. So, okay, that's good. Uh, in a in a related topic, uh, many folks know that we have been working on additional parking in LHS High School uh, as part of the pool and the property development. Um, this evening, uh, Board Member Scott Luce um, and uh, Associate Superintendent Brian Kelly and Director of uh, Buildings and Grounds Mark Koopman, uh, along with District Architect and Engineer, uh, were presenting that parking plan that we've uh, discussed a number of times with uh, the board in both committee meetings and at the board meetings um, and Scott just sent me a text and said uh, that the appearance review committee has approved their part of the plan so all next 
move to the next level at the village um, moving forward and that uh, is going to provide uh, an additional 69-ish uh, parking spaces uh, on the west side of the campus as we develop that um, part of the property and that is in addition to uh, the 40 parking spots that are currently non-usable as part of the construction that parking lot no longer exists that will be replaced so that will help our parking uh, problem at Libertyville um, greatly in uh, the future years so um, that's a uh, good news to report out and I think Scott and maybe Brian's are on their way back so that's uh, great to report out Okay, number four in the superintendent's report. Bo, can you uh, drop the screen for us? I just want to take a couple of minutes. Uh, the board has uh, seen this and heard me talk about this several times over the years. Um, and so the public probably has as well. But I uh, just want to do a bit of a review for um, the board tonight. Um, over the last three years, uh, from FY16 through next year, uh, we have uh, strategically and decisively uh, worked on uh, a plan to um, review what we were trying to accomplish and needed to accomplish with our workforce at, at the district level um, and then uh, utilize uh, attrition uh, for people that might be leaving the district to take other positions or retiring uh, to make some uh, administrative and staff um, support staff reductions. So if you'll, if you'll look up here uh, you will note in the salary columns, we, we have eliminated five district level positions. That is about 20% of the district level workforce. That has yielded roughly $463,500 in salary uh, and reduced benefits uh, roughly $85,826 for a total savings of $549,000. Uh, dollars and um, um, that's a significant amount of money um, and uh, assignment redistributions to date from the first rounds of uh, cutbacks we did we did need to reassign some of those um, and redistribute some of those um, uh, that workload uh, we used approximately twenty nine thousand dollars to do that so total savings at this point is in the neighborhood of five hundred and twenty thousand dollars Again, a reduction of about 20% of our workforce done by looking at what we were trying to drive and we needed to accomplish a district office and then uh, using attrition and retirements um, to be able to um, leverage um, that uh, moving forward. Now, as we move forward, uh, we are going to have to um, redistribute some other assignments and we'll need to use part of those resources uh, to do that, but those will all be um, Kind of part-time work, part-time positions, um, and so we'll still have uh, significant savings of you know easily above four hundred fifty, four hundred seventy-five thousand uh, dollars when we're done with those job uh, redistributions. So we want to put that in front of people again uh, today. So uh, there's a knowledge that as um, we work at district office, our modus operandi and our philosophy is is we exist to um, you know, provide guidance and support to our two high schools. We live and die by what happens in our two buildings. Um, some of our current board members uh, who were on the board several years ago, remember a couple of years ago, we actually started the year uh, with a very, very scary kind of long-term financial profile. And so uh, we talked about um, you know, doing some cuts within the district and seeing where we could save money. Um, we really ended up choosing uh, to address some of those structural issues um, in this way and we think it's significant and I will tell you at this point uh, there's no more to be had there okay as you might imagine with a 20 percent reduction um, of, of the staff we've gone as far as we can go and we've only been able to do that because of the quality of people that we have at district office and their willingness to kind of go way over and above um, to make this happen, but it's significant uh, because with the uncertainty at the state and some of the other issues, uh, before we ever turn to the building, uh, we know that we've taken a half a million dollars in, in savings that didn't ultimately have to be taken from um, the building or programs in the building. So uh, again, just wanted to show that for the benefit really of our community uh, to put it in a document where everyone could see that. So. 
happy to answer any questions about that or any comments that you might have on that. Good, thank you. Okay. All right, uh, next, uh, IASB dues every year about this time. Uh, we um, uh, have to pay our dues for the Illinois Association of School Boards. Uh, this district has been an active member in ISB for a very long time. Jim really serves as our uh, board liaison to the IS IASB and does a great job of that. So, uh, Pat, we are recommending that uh, we approve uh, our dues for next year for IASB uh, with a total of $10,115. Okay, is there a motion to um, approve the payment of the IASB uh, membership fee in the amount of $10,115? I move to approve the membership fees. Second. All right, any discussion? All right, roll call, please. Batson. Aye. Rudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Luce. Yeah, can, I, can I vote? Yeah, you can vote. Uh, Scott has entered the room. You can now vote. Uh, aye. Hello, aye. Thank you. <laughs> Munstead, aye. Thurman. Aye. All right, motion carries. Uh, thank you. Scott, before we move on, I ju we just did a quick update uh, that the uh, plan was approved. You want to give us an update, you and Brian? It was non eventful. We had a few questions as it related. Uh, just to some of the lighting, what were the lighting, what were some of the plants, um, just questions on understanding what we were trying to do, and that was, right, that was about it, correct? Yeah, correct, so the uh, ARC committee approved it to move on to the plan commission. Okay, thank you for that. Just question, and that included the lands, did they, did they take a position on the landscape to be provided, versus like a fence, things you know, so of that nature? Okay, we're not in that level of detail yet, but, no. Because our, I guess, you know, the plan that we proposed tonight had the landscaping yeah, lines, so that yeah, must mean they're okay with that, right? Great. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you for um, going over there uh, tonight. Okay, next, uh, the superintendent's report is Lake County Indemnification Agreement, and Dan, you want to uh, give us a little background on that? Sure, this is an annual agreement um, that uh, many districts in Lake County do with Lake County, uh, the county government, so as you have property that's developed in the different municipalities, so in Vernon Hills or in Libertyville, each municipality has their own rules about developers. So when you build, what what money or contributions do they have to give to the schools or for, for the public good? Uh, but you know, as you can see in our district boundaries, there's unincorporated portions, and so what happens when those get developed? Well, that falls under the jurisdiction of the county, and so the county says, well, listen, we'll withhold um, the permits for whoever's building until we get proof that they've paid you, essentially, or you've come to some type of agreement. In order for them to do that, we have to pass this annual resolution, basically saying, the Lake County says, we'll, we'll hold them up if you want to do an agreement, but if, if something happens, you're all going to hold the county, uh, you're going to indemnify the county for it, which is a uh, very common and very typical thing, so it's pretty straightforward. So we would recommend your approval of the Lake County indemnification agreement. Correct. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the Lake County indemnification agreement? Second. Any discussion? Yeah. Just question. It's been approved by the attorney, one of the attorneys, some attorney? Yes. Thank you. All right. The language doesn't really change much year over year, so very minor changes. I think there was a word misspelled maybe this year. So thanks. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, roll call, please. Rudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Thurman? Aye. Batson? Aye. Our motion carries. Okay, next on uh, superintendent's agenda tonight is 2018-19 uh, amended committee, uh, committee meeting and board meeting schedule. Uh, we changed one date on here uh, in deference to one of the Jewish holidays. So in September, we moved our um, F&F &F and PMP committee meetings from Monday, September 10th to Monday, September 17th. So in September, uh, we'll go back to back and then the board meeting will be on the 24th. Um, so, um, um, you know, we, we can continue with our past history here of um, um, ensuring that we don't have a conflict with uh, the Jewish holidays with meetings and activities. Okay, so our recommendation uh, would be to approve the amended committee and board meeting schedules. Okay, is there a motion to approve the recommended board committee meeting schedule? So moved. 
Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Hesso? Aye. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Thurman? Aye. Batson? Aye. Grudy? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. And uh, last night on the superintendent's report, we had two uh, Freedom of Information or FOIA requests uh, since our last uh, meeting on 4-30-18. Anna Dre uh, requested a copy of the LHS poll project site plan for parking and also a copy of the most recent survey of the LHS campy, uh, campus property. Uh, Brian Kelly did the follow-up and uh, we responded prior to the deadline. Uh, on 5-1, uh, we received a request from Marcus um, Namus um, from ATI Physical Therapy and uh, requested a copy of our current athletic training contract. Uh, Brian Kelly did the follow-up and again, uh, we responded well in advance of the deadline. And that concludes the FOIA's reports this evening, Pat, and also concludes that very lengthy superintendent's report. Could I ask a question before we move on? Yes. And, and I want to actually... As we're going back to school start time, I want to make sure, I, again, because it was so long ago. We had a group, of, a big group, study it, approve it. They said, what, 8.45 to 3.20? Is that right? What time was it? 3.25. 3.25. That was presented to us. Yes. We approved it as a board, I, guess, I believe, right? I don't think and it's a formal board action, did we? You endorsed yeah, it. We endorsed it. Okay, so we endorsed it. So we don't really, as a board, need to do anything else. Correct. Now. That's correct. So now it's in the, because we've been getting a lot of questions on this one, so of now it's in the hands of the board. Well, not really, it's in part of the negotiation, as Prentice alluded to. Uh, and just to kind of refresh our memory, why, what has to happen, because in length of day or something, like, just kind of try to put it in simple terms so we understand sure. why it's in this. Yeah, how, well, is, it, how, the, how is it dependent the, on collective bargaining? Right. Uh, it goes to working conditions, and in our contract, the periods are defined as 50 minutes. So the biggest piece is uh, the length of the class period. In order to do an 845 start and get out at 325 and not 345 or 4 o'clock, um, the periods have been uh, reduced a few minutes, and across the whole school year, uh, that reduction is actually pretty minimal um, when it moves forward. There are a couple of other uh, related pieces. Uh, right now, uh, we have a Late Start Wednesday, and uh, the teachers do professional learning community, professional development, um, and uh, curriculum uh, instruction work during that period of time. So in the new schedule, uh, that's flattened out among you know, uh, the five days of the week. Um, and so that's a change in a current working condition. So um, that uh, has to be part of the negotiations process. Okay, I think to your, maybe your bigger question, Kevin, to go back to is again, so let's say we've reached agreement on uh, that issue. Uh, will we still be able to do it next year because we're bargaining a contract? And technically speaking, all of the issues of the contract, all the individual issues, so let's say, salary and retirement, um, any, any other things that were normal for the contract and school start time, um, typically, uh, traditionally, all of those issues have to be resolved as part of the bigger agreement, uh, and then the union goes through a ratification process or their version of approval, then the board approves the contract, and the entire contract is done. So that is where we find ourselves kind of at this point on that issue. Okay, yeah, because I, again, I, I had some people ask me the question, if you all weren't negotiating a contract, and this was year two of a four-year contract, why, why is it so difficult? And again, as a courtesy, we, we know that our teachers are working very hard with the board. They are working very hard with the board. <laughs> <laughs> but as a courtesy, I think we just need to make sure we all understand there's nothing more this board needs to do right now if an agreement is reached with the teachers, we should be able to get late start in, but we are yes, starting to that, that would be correct, and so the answer to your first question is no, the board doesn't need to do anything more right now, and they cannot do anything more right now. It's, subject to that broader you know, negotiation. 
Um, and um, you know, that's a rea reality of contract negotiations. And I think, Kevin, the other thing you, you mentioned was, so let's say we were on a four-year contract and we were in the second year, what would happen? Would we wait until you know, the end of that, you know, the next two years in the contract to do that? And the mechanism for that would be to do something like a memorandum of agreement um, you know, in, in, the, in the interim, uh, rather than um, holding uh, the issue up or waiting on the issue for you know, two more years of the contract. No, perfect, thank you very much. Rita, did I miss anything here? No. Okay. Okay, good questions. Okay. All right, thank, thank you, you very much. Um, the consent vote agenda is uh, listed. We reviewed it last week in committee. If I could ask for a motion to approve the consent vote agenda as listed. I move to approve the consent vote agenda as listed. Second. Any discussion? All right, roll call, please. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Thurman? Aye. Batson? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Program and personnel, Chairperson Batson. Okay. First on the agenda. What up here? Uh, textbook adoption uh, requests for the upcoming uh, academic year. Rita Fisher, Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. We presented a list of textbooks for adoption uh, for the coming year. Um, the educators have um, worked diligently over the last couple of years uh, to uh, revise our textbook adoption scheme um, with the adoption of the digital learning strategy and the student possession of Chromebooks. We've looked at cost savings through digital editions of textbooks uh, when available. You'll see from the textbook requests that are uh, presented that um, textbook publishers continue to bundle the uh, hard copy of the text with the digital edition and there isn't too much savings for uh, foregoing the hardcover of the text. But when it's possible and when it presents the savings, uh, that's the solution that we've adopted to have uh, text as uh, classroom copies and uh, digital editions for all students to lower costs a bit. We've also extended the textbook adoption window um, from kind of an automatic five-year renewal to at least six and many of the texts that you see represented here are being adopted after seven or longer um, years. So um, we're, we're proud of the work that each of the departments has done in really carefully, carefully analyzing the text that they request and replace, and we're asking that you approve the adoptions as presented. So the total here is 189,427 and 90 cents. Rita, before we do the approval, and we've of course, we've all talked about this uh, leadership team in the district, and we've had some conversation with the board about this too, but um, if somebody says, well, we're in the digital age, what do we even need textbooks for? You know, which a, sure. a member of the public might say, well, sure. you know, why do we even need print textbooks anymore? So, right, and I, I alluded to that answer a little earlier that um, certainly many students are very comfortable with digital texts, and, and some students prefer to use only a digital text, um, but uh, textbook publishers are continuing to bundle the digital text with the hardcover text, and oftentimes uh, it doesn't really represent any savings to the district to adopt a digital-only text. And so for convenience of students who some still prefer a hardcover, we either have a classroom set of them or where um, it doesn't really even make sense to just do the classroom set, we're continuing to use that bundle of the hardcover and the e-edition for students' um, convenience. So, it's also true that some of the digital texts in the social studies area in particular um, are not very user friendly and continue to be kind of PDFs that students scroll through rather than as interactive as some of the disciplinary texts have become. So um, they're very careful in choosing the digital texts they adopt and in, you know, when it makes sense um, and when, you know, when the, the resources are um, optimal for student use to adopt the digital only, but when it, when it really doesn't result in much savings and there are features in the hardcover text that students need, then they adopt the bundle. And it would be safe to say that the major publishers have not yet made the full transition to electronic and digital. Would that be a fair statement? Sure. I think, you know, transitions are in progress, but the cost savings haven't 
presented themselves yet. Right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect them right. to be honest. One of the benefits. Right. One of the benefits here, though, is we can stretch it a little longer yeah. because the digital right. versions are constantly being updated, so they're they're up to date for a longer period of time. So you're basically buying access to that material for a longer period of time. Period of six years. And our educators are really adept um, at finding open educational resources as well. The, the number of free online resources that are available to educators continues to grow. And that's another way to supplement and uh, lengthen the time um, that a textbook is used because you're getting the more up-to-date materials as a free online resource. And one last observation here, those in, in several years ago, the state stopped uh, supporting textbook adoptions with resources at the state level. So in our district, um, we used to get approximately $250,000 every other year for textbook adoptions. So when we talk about locally, you know, more local dollars being required to, you know, kind of run your local public school, that's an example of, uh, you know, something the state used to do regularly. Uh, and had to do that as a financial cutback in the state. So, uh, Rita, thanks to you and your, um, the teams at both the buildings, great work. So we're recommending, Jim, that you approve that. Yes. Recommendation. Can we have a motion, please? Move to adopt the textbook uh, request as presented. Second. Any further comments, questions? Okay, roll call, please. Loose. Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Thurman? Aye. Batson? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, the final amended school calendar for 2017-2018. That's this year. We're almost at the end, but we have uh, one final amendment. That just re represents the actual uh, school calendar for this year with an emergency day use. <clears throat> nasty snow day that we had to all adjust for. So uh, with that, uh, can we have a motion, please? Move to approve the final 2017-18 school calendar. Second. Any further comments, con uh, concerns? OK, roll call, please. Lundstedt? Aye. Thurman? Aye. Batson? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Uh, we have Mobile Makers EDU license for LHS, and we discussed this in uh, committee, but uh, just a brief overview maybe? Sure, this represents uh, the agreement to license materials developed um, for the Mobile Makers uh, class. Um, the uh, high quality curriculum materials are used by a number of schools to offer an app development class. Um, it includes uh, materials for student use and for teacher professional development. Okay. Accessible online or an accessible uh, app development program for students. Okay. Uh, I believe we need a motion. I move to approve the Mobile Makers EDU license for LHS for 2018 19. Second. Okay. Any comments, questions? Again, this was reviewed in, uh, in committee. Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Thurman? Aye. Batson? Aye. Groody? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Okay, that uh, passes as well. Next on the agenda is a uh, board policy workshop planned for June 11th. Yeah, bas basically, uh, Bryant has uh, been working with council over the course of the year to identify uh, specifically board policies that you must um, make decisions on, um, as opposed to those that you can uh, cede or assign to me as the CEO of the, uh, of the district or the administrators um, in the district, and he's done a really nice job with that. We've also talked about having Lynn um, Himes come in um, and uh, work with us um, as part of a board policy workshop. So um, we set a tentative date up um, simply because several of you were available. Um, and so if you will check your calendars, uh, everyone is available on um, Monday, uh, June 11th. And that um, would typically be in a normal month, 
when we would have our committee meetings. But remember in June and July, we're, we do those meetings in sequence on the same night, uh, usually the fourth Monday of the month. So um, you can um, let me know. We already have Lynn scheduled. Brian's already ready to go. Um, probably looking at, you know, a couple hours uh, ish. Uh, we could go whenever you want to go. If you want to go earlier because it's whenever you all can make it here from work and your obligations at home. So if you want to go earlier that night at 6? I go early. 6? Okay, so we'll work with one and make, uh, make 6 happen there. Okay, and uh, if you can't make it, just let me know and we'll see, um, you know, what we can do there. Um, certainly Brian can um, spend time with you individually. If we need to follow up with Len, we can do that too. Okay? All right, great. I think it's a, a, a great timing. I think we, with the Lisa coming on board and uh, with so many policies that were updated within the last six to eight months, I would say, had a number of them. I think it's just a good refresher for all of us. So. Well, and I think that. too, you know, uh, one of the things we talked about is just to do election uh, law review uh, on that too. And so uh, that will certainly be, you know, uh, you know, part of the evening and a part of that conversation uh, that night. So uh, we can wrap all of that up. Uh, at one time, so that would be good. Okay, thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is a second reading and adoption for uh, Board Policy 6, uh, colon 310, credit for alternative courses and programs and course substitutions. Uh, this is some adjustment for, well, I'll let uh, Brian take it. So this allows for, um, to expand the <coughs> Those that are participating in interscholastic or extracurricular athletic programs currently our current policy is for 11th and 12th graders and this policy allows us to expand to include uh, 10th graders or sophomores okay. All right. uh, for the second reading can we have a motion please board member lisa hassel mm -hmm. Questions or comments? Okay, roll call please. Batson? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Thurman? Aye. Okay, the motion passes and we have one more. We have a um, educational support staff retirement. Uh, that was not uh, on the uh, consent agenda. Came in after. Yeah, it just so it came in after the um, our last one. So Marla Sandler has asked to Sandler has asked to retire at the uh, effective eight two of two thousand and eighteen. Yeah. All right. So, so I move to accept the retirement as it's stated. Okay. Second. All right. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Grudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Luce. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. 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 Anybody have anything under the category other? Okay, no, that uh, concludes first, uh, almost said uh, the wrong thing, a uh, uh, person, uh, program and personnel committee. All right. So we're used to doing the other. Good job, uh, Jim. Facilities Thank and you. finance, chairperson Luce. All right, first thing on the agenda is resolution and authorizing and directing the transfer of interest from the debt service fund to the education fund. Mr. Stanley. Yeah, so as talked about in the committee, there's really two resolutions, two different ones that look very similar. Um, the debt service fund and the working <coughs> cash fund um, generate interest throughout the year, and so it's wise practice to, at the end of the year, uh, transfer the interest into the fund most in need. If you don't transfer the interest, then that money turns into <coughs> the principal balance of that fund and it restricts the use of that money uh, significantly more. And so at this point, the education fund is the fund that would need those funds. And so this will, uh, for this resolution, we'll do about $20,203 plus whatever interest we earn in May and June because uh, those months aren't done yet, and so we'll do that transfer at the end of the fiscal year. But this authorizes that to happen as well. Correct. Okay. Do I have a motion on this item? So moved. So moved. Second. 
All righty. Um, any discussion, questions? Roll call. Did I do that correctly? You're doing great. Vessel? <laughs> Aye. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Thurman? Aye. Batson? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Thank you. All right. The motion carries. No, motion carries. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, uh, President. Um, second item, also Mr. Stanley. Resolution authorizing and directing the transfer of interest from the working cash fund to the education fund. Same same idea, except this time the amount to transfer the interest that was generated the working cash fund uh, through the end of April is twenty seven thousand one hundred thirteen dollars and forty eight cents, plus whatever we earned in those in that fund uh, in May and June. Okay. Do I have a resolution to? Uh, Resolution to uh, I move to transfer the interest. Authorize the, uh, to approve this as it is. <laughs> I, I move to uh, transfer the interest from working cash to the education fund. Second. All right, roll call, please. Oh, no, discussion or questions? There are none. Roll call, please. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Thurman? Aye. Batson? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Essel? Aye. All right, third item. Very good. Oh, it's the, the motion carries. You're getting it. And you've had a lot of practice tonight, Scott. Here. He's not done yet. I'm not done yet. I've been on a plane a long time. He's had a long today. day. All right, third item. You're, you're killing us, Dr. Dan Stanley. Third item. Should see the committee. Res uh, resolution establishing a capitalization threshold for the district's accounting purposes. Yeah, we currently have a capitalization threshold of $1,000. I'm recommending that we increase that threshold to $10,000 effective July 1st of 2018. Essentially, anything that, any, any item or group of items that are meant really to be together, anything that we buy that's over $1,000, right now we have to um, put on a list and the auditors have to review that list and we depreciate that over a period of five years on our CAF or in, in my opinion, and several others, that's a very low threshold. The GFOA, uh, the Governor and Financer, Finance Officers Association, uh, recommends a threshold of at least, or no less than 5,000, but due to our size, I would recommend 10,000, and so um, it would significantly reduce the number of items that we're having to depreciate over time. Um, and it, it'll make our audit more simple, it'll make some of our record keeping more simple. All right, do I have a motion to approve this item? I move to increase the capitalization threshold from 1000 to $10,000. Second. July 1. Second. Any comments or discussion? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had already forecasted yeah. that in committee, just so you mm -hmm. know. Kevin. Thank you. Sure. 1000 why only 10 Why not 25 I mean, we're a huge organization. Yeah. I mean, again, I think the public really understands more expensing the item when you buy it, which means anything under $25,000, if we, or in the case of the motion, is it presented anything under 10, we expense immediately, anything over 10, we're gonna depreciate over a period of three, five, seven, 40, whatever the number. That's harder for the public to understand. Why not, if we're gonna make a motion, is it, unheard of to go that high in your experience? Uh, based on districts of our size, I don't see many of them higher than 10,000. They certainly may be there, but that's a more common number uh, for larger districts based on what I've seen. You certainly can go higher, um, just 10,000 is just kind of a, a more common number to see amongst oh. some bigger districts. My, my question, my question maybe why I have this at all, I just don't understand it. But for a, a, it's, yeah, yeah, the accounts are gonna make us have it, but uh, I think 10 is fine. I mean, we're going 10 times what we have now, right? Correct. So it's a nice starting point. We can potentially we can go up later revisit on. it later on in life if we mm -hmm. so choose. But if this would make your life easier, yeah. it sounds it's the right thing to do. It makes the public understand the financials better as well. So It sounds like you're going to 10 because the rest of the schools are going to 10. Mm -hmm. If we weren't following the role of some of our comparables, would you propose going higher than that? Uh, I wouldn't at this time. There's there's a significant difference between a thousand and even five thousand. So even five thousand would be 
a major improvement, five to 10,000. There's not a whole lot of things you buy. They're kind of in that range. So really the 10,000 gets a lot of it's the trucks. It's, you know, the big servers or I don't know if a server costs 10,000, but it gets the really big things or any capital project we do, it's gonna capture all of that. So really at the end of the day, you're still gonna probably end up capitalizing a sim similar dollar amount, but the number of items is gonna be significantly less because we're not gonna capitalize every single laptop that costs over $1,000, yeah. that kind of a thing. And you're saying increase it further wouldn't significantly increase or reduce that worth further. Basically. No, no, the, 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 the amount of items that will go down going from 1,000 to 10,000 is huge, going from 10,000 to 25, not a big, not a big change. Thank you. Any other questions, discussion? Can we have a roll call on this motion? Lewis. Aye. Lundstedt. Wait, hold on. Did you have a, did you? Okay. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Thurman. Aye. Batson. Aye. Rudy. Aye. Castle? Aye. Huber? Aye. Motion passes. On to the next one. Vernon Hills High School copiers contract. Assistant Superintendent for Finance, uh, Dan yeah, Stanley. So we're, we're looking to replace two, uh, we have two Xerox machines that are reaching their end of useful life in this building, and so we would like to replace them uh, with two similar, similar machines, but from Canon. Uh, we don't actually have the verbiage of the contract because the attorney is still reviewing it. Uh, so what I would recommend that we would request is potentially an action or a, an approval authorizing the superintendent to enter into a five-year lease with Canon to replace these two copiers um, pending our attorney, our attorney um, review. That's kind of really what we're waiting on at this point. So you would be taking a contingent vote. It would be contingent upon Attorney. Council getting back and saying it's okay, and if they say it's not okay, then we're not going to enter into the contract. So that will allow us just to keep moving forward and get John his copiers and get them in here and you know get them ready to go. We need a five-year contract, and they do need them. It's a five-year lease, yeah. um, yes. and so it, it, you, and we'll have, we'll we'll realize a significant savings, at least ten thousand dollars a year, probably as much as twenty thousand, um, depending on. Uh, what the final terms? Yeah. All right. So, so would you be okay with that? I guess that that's the question. I, I'm I'm fine with it. So I'll I'll word it this way, and you correct me uh, if you think it's wrong. But do I have a proposal to move forward with Vernon Hills High School copiers contract contingent on legal looking at this and reviewing it? So moved. You want to flex that? I would just part. clarify that it's a, a it, authorizing the enter into. A five-year lease with Canon to replace these machines. Okay, so let me rephrase it. Do I have a motion to move forward with Vernon Hills High School copiers contract on a five-year lease with Canon pending legal approval of the contract? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So moved. Second. Any discussion or any other questions? Roll call, please. Lundstedt? Aye. Thurman? Aye. Batson? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Castle? Aye. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. And the motion passes. Okay, we continue. Uh, the next item on here is renewal of the Libertyville High School Student Activities Coca Cola contract. This is the contract we discussed in committee. Um, no changes to what it is. It's essentially a renewal of the the existing contract that they've been having with so this is a five year renewal. And just again for uh, the public that may be watching, uh, both our high schools have uh, software <coughs> contracts um, and at the time those contracts are up for renewal, there's some pretty intense competition usually uh, for those contracts. You know, vendor A wants to continue to be vendor A uh, and vendor B would like to be you know, the new vendor for the school. So uh, it generally comes down to Coke and Pepsi, generally um, speaking. So this is just a kind of a renewal of that uh, agreement. Um, and um, uh, there's uh, some substantial cash uh, as part of uh, the agreement uh, with the schools and the buildings use um, uh, that money directly for kids um, in the building. So uh, that's what we're really looking at here. And John, I think yours is, uh, in a year or two, I think, right? Yeah, we had a five-year deal when I started, so we have one more year. Yeah, so we'll be coming back to next year with, with John. 
um, and Vernon Hills. So. All right. Well, do I have a motion regarding the renewal of the LHS Student Activities Coca-Cola Cup? So moved. Second. All righty. Any other questions or discussions? Pleasures. Pleasures. Questions? Uh, roll call, please. Thurman? Aye. Baxson? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. It passes. Mm -hmm. Going down the list, renewal of the Vernon Hills High School Yearbook Photography Services contract. <coughs> uh, so it's in a similar vein to the Coca-Cola, any contract that's generated, that's that's intended to generate more than $1,000 of revenue uh, for the district or for students, it requires board approval, and so this is an example of one of those contracts. Uh, VIP is the, the current provider, and they're very happy with it, and so there's um, there's revenue there, and that's a contract that we reviewed in the committee as well. How long is that again? Uh, this one is just for one year. One year. How long is LHS? I'm there. sorry? So this one's one year, correct? Correct, for Vernon Hills High School. Okay. I do have a motion regarding the renewal of the uh, Vernon Hills High School yearbook photography services contract. So moved. Second. Any discussion or further questions? Uh, roll call, please. Batson? Aye. Grudy? Aye. Essel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Thurman? Aye. All right, motion passes. G, school's treasurer bond renewal. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, you appointed me as treasurer and I'm happy to continue, continue serving as such. Uh, however, it requires that uh, we, I have to be bonded for that. And um, the, the resolution essentially that is presented to us by the regional office, it really looks like this is something the board is approving on an annual basis, so we'd rather be more safe than sorry and bring this to you based on their language and uh, have you approve the bonding, essentially, for it. <coughs> okay, do I have a motion regarding the school treasurer's bond renewal and approval? So moved. Second. Any other uh, questions or discussion? Roll call, please. It's Rudy. Aye. Tessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Thurman? Aye. Batson? Aye. Motion passes. H, renewal of landscape maintenance contract. This is a renewal with our current provider, a one, uh, one year renewal really for this season, the 2018 growing season. Uh, it's a price of $22,177.75, which is a 1.5% increase over the prior season. All right. And I think we can say they're probably earn, earning every penny plus more this spring. Mm -hmm. Maybe. The, the, the rain this means rain you can't cut grass as much. So it makes it harder uh, to cut the grass. They were cutting the grass, grass today, today while it was raining. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to cut grass. They were working grass. hard today. Yeah, it's hard to cut grass. In this we are actively managing that. So do I have a motion for the renewal of landscape maintenance? Don't move. Second. All right, any other discussions or questions? Roll call, please. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Thurman? Aye. Batson? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Motion passes. Aye. Bid awards. We have two. LHS Stadium North Fence Replacement and Vernon Hills High School Carpet Replacement. Uh, so part of our list is replace the North Fence at the LHS Stadium. Um, and. It's about 640 linear square foot, so we, we bid that out um, because we were estimating that the cost would be around 50000 and that's the threshold uh, to bid out a, a project like that. We had three contractors um, attend the pre-bid meeting, and we received three bids. Uh, the low bid was uh, ProFence 2 Incorporated with a bid of $52,800. Um, they confirmed their bid, and everything seems to be uh, all in shape for that, so we would recommend the board approve or accept the bid from ProFence 2 Incorporated. Uh, for the amount of $52,800 uh, for the uh, North Fence replacement at LHS Stadium. Can we vote on these separately or can we yeah, separate separate. Separate. All right, so um, do I have a motion regarding the uh, accepting the bid for the LHS Stadium? I move that the uh, Board of Education accept the bid from Pro Fence 2 Incorporated in Wheeling, Illinois, in the amount of $52,800 for delivery of the high school 
stadium north fence replacement project. Second. All right, any other discussion or questions? Roll call, please. Huber? Aye. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Thurman? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Motion approved. All right, now uh, the Vernon Hills High School carpet replacement. Sorry for all the things. We just don't want you to think that we're just not doing anything. You know, we're well, actually, I told Jim he may be, you know, tonight he is certainly the smartest person so, yeah, in the room. I, I, because I, he changed uh, chairman. I want to go chairman. on the record in front of the camera that I believe there's a conspiracy just to mess with me. I, I'm um, telling you, this is the largest no, Evan Eckley report we've you ever had. Time. <laughs> and I think Kevin Huber is behind the conspiracy. <laughs> Just for the record, for the camera. Assistant <laughs> Superintendent for Finance, Dan Stanley. So we are at the point of replacing the carpeting in the Vernon Hills foyer. So as you walk out, uh, maybe you'll take a look. And so there's a there's an attachment that was included that shows you the areas that we're looking to affect. Uh, this. It is a bid that we're approving. This is already nationally bid pre-pricing uh, through Shaw Industries. Um, and so the amount that came in is for $97,021.16 for the Vernon Hills uh, carpet replacement. We would recommend uh, that approval. And Dan, just to point out again, we're doing, we're doing squares, right? Carpet uh, carpet. Doing a comp carpet combination yeah. of, we're doing a combination of them. I think the vast majority is uh, the carpet squares, but there's going to be um, some luxury vinyl tile as well. Um, yeah, but it's not roll carpet, it's the point. No, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. So okay. you can replace right. things that they stain or right. 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 squares. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So do I have a uh, motion to approve the, uh, the Vernon Hills High School carpet replacement? I move that the Board of Education accept a proposal from Shaw Industries Incorporated, Cartersville, Georgia. In the amount of $97,021.16 for the Vernon Hills Carpet Replacement Project. Second. All right, any questions? Yeah, discussion? I just have one. Board member Kevin Huber. We, we talked, yeah, no, we talked about, the, the Vernon Hills is obviously, we're to, we've talked about some CapEx in the future. <coughs> I'm is, sorry, some what? Uh, capital expenditures, and specifically in this area, I believe, we talked about expanding the cafeteria and making the facilities a little bit more, unless just more useful to the students as opposed to them eating on top of each other. Yeah. So would this impact, are we putting carpet down where yeah. that will be ripped up that's, a little later? That's exactly my same question. Right. Would we be, yeah. If we prove to go ahead and do the classrooms, the cafeteria are gonna be like, wow, we should have waited a year because now we have to tear this up. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, Somebody smarter can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the, the biggest area that they were concerned with was um, near the pool and the lockers area that is going to be held off for now until that. Um, there is some area that potentially could be affected by the cafeteria expansion, but we're still very early on in that planning process and the amount that would be affected. Um, the minimus that would be probably pretty minor. Okay. At that point. Especially with the carpet, it's tough. The marker is sure is, I think, less. Well, the other. Yeah, yeah, question I would you know and it, this is all dependent on what that capital spend or what the project would be yeah. but could you use the same pattern right with it with that's the other true things. and then remember with the cafeteria because it is a good question because we don't yeah. want to do work around the cafeteria let's say the cafeteria expansion was going the other way which we would never have it do but let's just say for argument's sake let's say we were going expanding the cafeteria into the foyer right 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 then it would be not very smart for us to say, oh, well, let's go put some new carpet squares down there and some vinyl flooring. Oops, we got to tear it up when we expand the cafeteria. So going out into the courtyard and, and kind of you know reconfiguring the service lines, which we're looking at right now, you know, really precludes that. But I think we could say, I, and I'm looking at Dan and John, I think we could say that we would be very cautious and we certainly understand that as our planning goes, if it looks like you know we're gonna duplicate effort and we have to come back and possibly tear some stuff out and then put it back in, um, you know we're gonna do everything within our power for that not to happen because we understand the value of those dollars. Okay, yeah. I think I, and yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. absolutely certain that that's you know we'll be very cautious about that. 
Correct, sure. Go ahead, Lisa. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did Mark address this at the committee yeah, meeting? He did. We did, he did, he did cover really this. About so that. that's a, a good question. In the, yeah, and I'm sorry, I was not at the committee meeting. What is the status? Again, we know Vernon Hills had some, and John took us around and showed us what was needed. And I think we all really agreed immediately that we got to fix this cafeteria issue with the kids and make, make it better. What, what is the status of, was that talked about the committee meeting? Yeah, Mark, that, Mark updated us on the plans and, you know, rough timeline on when we'll actually move things ahead. I think at the end of the day, it's kind of like by November, December, um, like yeah, so that would be not, potentially not to go being out to bid yeah. for the whole project. Yeah. So we're not going to we're not going to bite off the cafeteria right yeah. now. Try to get it done yeah. so yeah. the kids we'll come back. So that would be that would be next summer. That would be next summer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's not we possible. Can't meet that time. Okay, very good. That, no, was, no, I, that was impossible from the start. Thank you. I, I again, I know it was such a need. I didn't know. Depending on the timing of everything. Yeah, the the priority would be to get the cafeteria done for next summer for the for the start of school, and they'll they'll stage it and schedule it around with. Whatever else may be going on. Huh. Sorry, again, my apologies. No, that's that's a good question. Those are good Thanks. questions. Any other discussion or questions? Do we have a motion? Do we have a motion? Yeah. Uh, okay. Anything else? Roll call, please. Luce? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Garman? Aye. Batson? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Hassel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Motion passes. All right. Scott, anything one, else? One, one other thing, again, just for the public, we, we periodically re like to remind the public. We've covered an awful lot of business tonight in uh, program of personnel and facilities and finance. And the board does the majority of its work on the issues at our committee meetings. So what you're seeing is kind of the result of that work, the result of those discussions, the result of those questions, uh, asked, and you've got a little flavor this evening for the type of questions uh, that we may go into, but that's where the board does its in-depth work. So um, if you want to um, actually view uh, that work going on and listen to that work going on, and as always, we would encourage you to uh, come to either of uh, the committee meetings because, again, this is a summation of the uh, um, good work that the board uh, does. Uh, in um, oversight and in working with the district and building administration in terms of making recommendations and decisions. So it's just important once in a while that we remind people that's where we do, you know, the yeoman you know, share of our detailed work. I'd like to add something. Uh, I would like to congratulate my colleague Scott on his uh, chairmanship and would like to applaud your trial by fire this evening. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank Dr. Groovy for that as well. Anything else? Thank you, man. Great job. I don't believe so. There's nothing, no other. And I don't think we have anything in property. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Sarah. Sarah. So, see you at that time of year again for the budget to be approved by the member district. Um, and I was not able to go to the budget presentation, but I did with Dan. Um, anything? I mean, there's a couple of things of note. Uh, one has to do with the tuition that we are charged. <coughs> Yeah, um, essentially, I think I could be wrong, but we're looking at about a total increase from for CEDAW at about 4%. Uh, part, that's two parts. One is just tuition rates, oops, is tuition rates just increasing? Uh, they're increasing the recommendation uh, from the administration. What is presented for, for the CEDAW board is a 3% increase in tuition rates, uh, which is not terrible considering their history. It's been anywhere from 3 to 5% the last several years. Go beyond that, and you're in. They're in there's, they've had double-digit increases um, beyond the last few years. So uh, that, my sense of the three percent um, seems reasonable in terms of that. It still makes a fair point of the whole. You know, if long-term, if our revenues keep only going up by CPI, that's something that that it can't be sustainable for the long term. But at least at this point, it looks reasonable. The other big component is they had the uh, my counterpart over there. They went through and re. Um, organized the tuition rates per the different programs. Since she has been there, which I know has got to be at least 10 years, um, they basically had the tuition rates for all the various programs you could be in, 
and they've just been increasing as the rates have been going up. And what they decided to do is go back, reset all those tuition rates to really closely align to the actual cost of those programs because that changes over time. And so they reset those rates, which is needed and is more fair. Uh, that did impact us some. Um, it impacted other districts in different ways. It depends on the students you have and the needs of those students. And so that happened to impact us probably another 1% on the overall uh, change, but um, that's really where we're at. So what is 4% for the um, the total, this, this I think the total we're going to be giving to Seattle is about 1.8 million so next year. So 4% up on that? 1.8 and 1.769. Yeah, so 1.7 something up to 1.8 something. Dan, is, is that increase, um, this might be a question somebody might ask, is, is that increase net uh, any reimbursement from the state or the federal government for IDEA is so is it 1.8 million minus the reimbursement we get from the state or federal government? Uh, no, the the money we get from IDEA is, is is not a reimbursement. It's just a it's a funding amount based on the number of students. So it it's really not net of that. It's just kind of a raw expenditure increase. Um, I don't think we're anticipating much, if any, increase in IDEA overall. Um, if, if there's anything, it would, it would probably be pretty small, I would say. Um, a lot of the special ed um, monies that we were getting through the state is wrapped up now in evidence-based funding model or kind of like our general state aid now. Um, but anyways, those dollars that we would have sent to all may or may not have been really part of that. Uh, calculation. So I, I don't have a super clear answer for you. Sorry about that. No, that's actually a really good answer. And if you remember the Seattle, you know, they have like a three-tier tuition program now. I mean, it's, it changed it to adapt to more specifically to the students that are actually using it, and okay. it's it's set up to try to encourage the students that can both easily be assimilated into their school to to stay in our school, as opposed to those who are the most uh, in need of the kind of programs that we can't provide for them. Those tuitions are actually, you know, low, lower, so that they can do what they do best, and we can do what keep our kids. Um, so it's always going to be in flux, but it's also a new system, so they're kind of tweaking it, right? Um, the other thing too, just is that uh, the actual overall um, budget for next year is actually a little bit lower than the estimated actual for this year, uh, mostly because O and M they're not um, they're finishing up the project. Uh, that will be voted on at the June 7th meeting. Okay. We don't need a motion or anything. I just want to inform everybody. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, Karen. All right. Uh, no ISB, right, Jeff? Right. Okay. All right. And again, I want to just clarify. So the action we're going to take if there's a star next to this number nine here is simply to move into executive session, correct? Correct. All right, so is there a motion to move into executive session? Again, the topic is collected. Negotiating, negotiating matters, 5 ILCS 120 slash 2C. So moved. Second. Second. All right, any discussion? Roll call, please. Lundstedt, aye. Thurman. Aye. Benson. Aye. Rudy. Aye. Kessel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Bruce. Aye. All right, motion carries. Again, no further action this evening, so thanks everybody. Good night.